What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast, episode 20 of the College Loop Podcast. I am joined today by Harris Sitar, as always, and special guest, Mr. Jacob Goins from ESPN 1067's live show on the line. How you doing? Doing fantastic, fellas. Appreciate you having me on. And a problem. Pumped to have you here. And pumped uh, only about that right now, because we are recording <laughs> very shortly after an Auburn basketball loss, in which... The officiating was, mm. I saw it. Had, mm. All right, Dylan, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and take the reins from you there. Uh, yeah, you might need to. Because, I'm gonna... uh, I, think, I think that I may have a little more clear of a head here. Uh, Goins, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, with on the loop, with the loop, and if you've not been uh, not super familiar, we always run that I run point for basketball. Dylan runs point for football. I know that shocks yeah. absolutely nobody, considering you. <laughs> Uh, but I always, I always take the, take the rundown for, for basketball. So we're going to jump right in. Um, obviously we're fresh, probably 15 minutes off of, uh, Auburn basketball's, uh, six, uh, 46, 43 loss to Tennessee. That was a real score. I said that was not a halftime score. That was not 10 minutes left in the third and it's in the second half score. That was a final. Um, there was a giant lid on the basket, uh, and, 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 you know, to an extent, uh, Jacob, I'm going to kind of open the floor for your immediate reaction here. Uh, you can't leave the, the game in, in the hands of the referees. Um, and, and I know that uh, Dylan mentioned the, there was poor officiating personally. I know this is not going to resonate well with a lot of Auburn fans. I thought it was called pretty piss poor in both ways. Um, it definitely wound up hurting Auburn ultimately more than it did Tennessee. Um, but I, I thought the officiating was horrific on both ends of the floor. Um, so just kind of your initial initial thoughts here, um, specifically coming down the stretch. I don't think Auburn really had a plan in those last two minutes. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to get your thoughts and, and immediate reactions. Well, Harrison, I'm going to be really honest with you, man. There's most games that I just feel like Auburn doesn't have a plan, right? I just I, – I, I struggle to find – look, let me start this by saying Bruce Pearl is a fantastic coach, and I've said that because he is, right? He's a, he's a top-10 basketball coach in all of college basketball, right? But there's so many times, and more times this year than I've seen in a long time, fellas, that we just find ourselves having this conversation of – what was the game plan? What was the offensive mindset? What in the world were the guys doing to try and score the basketball, right? And especially, like you said, down the stretch where, believe it or not, it was KD Johnson who took over the game and actually gave Auburn a chance to do something down the stretch on the road at Tennessee, right? That's not supposed to happen because of how wishy-washy, I guess is the best way to put it, that KD Johnson has been, right? And so, <laughs> No, I, I, we have found ourselves so many times on my show and, and you know, I know you guys and everybody around all of our basketball just trying to figure out what in the world is the game plan for this team? And you mentioned the officiating down the stretch in this Auburn loss at Tennessee. Sure, the officiating was horrible, right? It was bad, and there was a foul on Wendell Green at the end. Should have been a foul, should have been three free throws. But as I was telling you guys right before we came on here, Score 43 points in an SEC game on the road, guys. You can't expect to win that. And so um, more this year than ever, I question Bruce Pearl's coaching, decision-making, and just development of players on the team. You know, I think you bring up a good point. And, 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 and Dylan, I'm going to let you expand off of, uh, of, of that point. I'm just going to use myself as a little transition piece. We I talk about this all the time, uh, Jacob. Uh, and, and I spoke about this with uh, Auburn uh, Sports Network's uh, uh, Jacob Hillman earlier in the week. I'm getting all my Jacobs mixed up here. I'm covering all my Jacob bases. Uh, There's a lot of us, man. There's a lot that's of us. Right. And, and I've, not, I've yet to meet one that's not a dang good dude. So, there you go. There you go. But uh, we, 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 we talk a lot about Bruce Pearl, phenomenal recruiter, uh, phenomenal motivator. Um, I think he's a very middle-of-the-road X's and O's guy. Um, I, I think that uh, st strategic strategy wise that uh, that it's maybe not his strong point. And, and I'm not saying that he's not the right guy for Auburn. God knows, give him a lifetime contract. Um, I, I like you said, top 10 guy. Dylan, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to get your thoughts here. Is it just me and Goins or are you on this or Goins and I rather? Sorry. Are you on the same page here that this was kind of one of those moments where it kind of just did not look like Auburn had a game plan? I mean, you watch the last three seconds of the game and yeah, Wendell Green got fouled, but it didn't get called. But he was just kind of – he just had the ball running around with it. Like, all he knew in that moment in time was uh, the scoreboard, we're down by three. There was no screens. There was no nothing. It was just Wendell Green with the ball running around the arch, just back and forth, just trying to find a single look. It's like they didn't really have a play in motion. It was just get ball, shoot ball. And, and go yeah, into and what and I'm sorry, go yeah. ahead. No, well, and that's that's what I was going to say. It's like, you know, and, and that's the that's what it's been. But that 
unfortunately, guys, that's the Bruce Pearl offense. Like, that is it. And you talk about him being an X's and O's guy. He's just not. Like, he's a great recruiter. I know we're going to get into that, I'm sure, some of the massive recruits that Bruce Pearl is pulling, right? That stuff is fantastic. And those things are great. Bruce Pearl will have a statue by the time this thing is done. But For sure. X's and O's wise, it's just not there. And he's been running the same flex offense. They mentioned it during the ESPN broadcast. He's been running the same offense since his whole career. I mean, he learned it way back in the day. He's been running it for a long time. And when it works, it works. But unfortunately, this team does not have the right players to run that type of offense. And so more times than not, in the half court, it's Wendell Green dribbling the basketball and the other four guys standing off to the side, flat-footed, watching. And that just can't happen. There's not enough good shooters on this team for that to work. There's not enough good creators, like playmakers on this team to happen and make their own shot, right? So, yeah, at the end of the game, you see – it, they fed it down low, but they bring it back out. Janai Broom, of all people, ends up with the basketball outside the three-point arc, and it's Wendell Green coming off the edge, shooting a 28-foot contested three. Yes, he was fouled, but, I mean, that is that is Auburn's Bruce Pearl offense right now, and you see why they lose more times than not so far in the last couple of days. You know, you you, you mentioned the buzzword there, going some shooters, um, and 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 that's gonna that's been the running theme, and it's going to continue to be the running theme coming down the stretch for Auburn. Because let's face it, guys, we're gonna talk about it here in a second. Auburn's got a dang gauntlet to run, and this was just the beginning. Uh, but you you look at where the ball's getting getting placed, and, and you were talking about that flex offense, and, and people being flat footed. I, I want to mention that you're correct about it. it's a lot of Wendell Green dribbling at the top of the key. It's also a lot of him swinging it back and forth and playing hot potato with Jalen Williams. True. Um, and, and this is not necessarily me ripping this team apart. I think this team can be very strong in a, in a lot of things that they want to do, but they've got to face a defense, not like Tennessee, that's going to let them do it. Um, unfortunately, when you get to the big dance, that's going to be a problem. When you get to the SEC tournament, that's going to be a problem. This league is, is I mean, I know that people are talking about the SEC's got a down year. Yes, BS. It's not. Um, it's just more competitive than it has been at maybe ever. Um, and, and, and I kind of want to take that as a transition piece here. You, you mentioned, uh, that, that this has got to kind of got to change. It starts on, it starts this week when you have another tough road test against a, a coach that let's call a spade a spade has had Bruce Pearl's number. Um, I mean, if, if you look at a couple of coaches that have had tremendous success against Bruce Pearl, you think of buzz and you think of, uh, probably Mike white, um, which I know that's mind boggling considering he's been at Florida and been underperforming and now he's at Georgia weird career trajectory trajectory there but <laughs> right those are a couple of there's i mean it's true though it's a couple of yeah. coaches no it is 100 yeah don't i want to I want to go and take a take a turn because i don't want to dwell too long on this on, on this loss there's a lot of things to take away but i mean at the end of the day auburn just shot they shot less than tw- fewer than 25 percent from the floor and they they shot 3 of 27 from the from from deep and that was way too, too many shots i think we all agree yeah how do auburn start to turn this thing around and i know that you can build off the georgia win whatever you want to go with and whatever direction i'll respect but Today is today. And, and and how does how does Bruce Pearl and company, how do they start today in terms of, all right, we got to get our stuff together so we're not absolutely running the gauntlet in March? Yeah, I think, you know, the month of February for this Auburn team, they have probably the toughest schedule in college basketball. I mean, there's, sure. there's just no doubt about it. Two games against Tennessee, two games against Alabama, on the road at Texas A&M, uh, on the road at Kentucky, right at Rupp Arena. So, this team has the toughest stretch in February than anybody does in college basketball. I've looked at it, I've compared, and that's just a fact. And look, credit to Auburn. Wednesday against Georgia was a must win. It was an absolute must win. Carter Byrne, my co-host and I, we talked about that. Wednesday was a must win given what was coming up for this Auburn team. This was going to be a tough win today on the road to Tennessee. It just was. But you saw this was a winnable game, but you ask how they fix it. Man, I hate to come on here and say I don't know, but I think this team is just sort of what they are. Unfortunately, I just think they are what they are. And here's an important conversation that needs to be had with a lot of Auburn fans, and I don't think a lot of them have had. It can't be great every single year. It can't be great every year, right? Look at Blue Bloods across the country right now. Duke, unranked. North Carolina, unranked. Kentucky, unranked right these teams are not great year in and year out sure they have hall of fame coaches sure they have top five recruiting classes but they're not great every year because sometimes you just miss look at trey or and chance westry right now those guys were supposed to be it and they're just not right now they might be in the future 
but they were supposed to be star-studded freshmen that came in and just took over this program, and that didn't happen. And that is okay. It happens in college basketball. So how does Auburn get better right now? I would like them to fix their offense, quit shooting. You're 3 of 27 from 3. You're 327th ranked in the country at shooting three-pointers, and yet that's all you do today is shoot half your shots from behind the arc. I think you just got to continue to ride that defense, try to find somebody to score. I think that that name is Jalen Williams, of all people. But you're going to have to ride your defense if you're Auburn through March. Hopefully you still get there. I think there is a scenario, fellas, where Auburn could play themselves out of the NCAA tournament. It would be a lot, but I think there's a way they could. I hope not, but I think there's a way they could. You got to ride your defense and just hope you can start knocking down some shots. I don't think you're wrong. But I, I can't believe someone had the stones to come on the loop and say it. And I and, and hey, listen, this is not. I, I I try to be as neutral as I possibly can. You you, you know, <laughs> Goins. Um, yeah. Uh, you just you just spit some facts, Dylan. I mean, I mean, Goins is just just speaking facts right now. And I'm I'm gonna get your get your thoughts here, Dylan. And then I'm actually gonna pass the torch to you because I know you're ready to get some positives going and talk some crouton and on the <laughs> on the hardwood. I mean, I mean, who is it? Uh, but uh, I, just before you get into to the crouts, if you will, um, Dylan. Um, I'm going to kind of pose that same question, and it feels like it's becoming I'm becoming a broken record here on the college loop. Uh, if his name is not Jalen Williams, who's going to step up for Auburn that can be big going down the stretch? Because actually, Goins kind of took my answer. That's kind of that sucks. I just like week in and week out. I'm messing with you, Jacob. I completely agree. Go ahead, Dylan. <laughs> I'm going to say Katie Johnson. Uh, he said back to back. He's he's had five halves <laughs> of basketball where he's been pretty much a reliable scorer for Auburn. I won't, well, I won't say five halves. I'll probably say four. I like how half. you pose that as a question. <laughs> well, because I've been very hesitant to give Katie Johnson the credit he's deserved the past few games just because sure. he's been that reliable scorer off the bench. And tonight, I mean, or today, or yesterday, actually, when this comes out, he finished second on the team in points with 10 right behind Janai Broom. And y'all talk about Jalen Williams – Last two games, he scored four points, and today he shot 10% from the field. I, I know Jay Will's the probably one of the best players on the team, most consistent player on the team, but the last two games, he's been kind of absent. And uh, Johan, we saw him three games ago get eight points, which wasn't a, car- a career high for him, but, I mean, he looked promising. And then he wasn't he was did not play a single minute last two games. We saw him today, and, I mean, he looked like he didn't play for two games because he, he put up, what, one rebound was his only stat? Uh, yeah, a rebound and a foul was were his two stats. I mean, I, but I think Katie Johnson, if he continues to play like he has been, I, mean, I think he's a very important player down the stretch for the Tigers. I I, I don't disagree. And go as I heard you. I heard your little inquisitive tone a second ago. Um, and I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> um, I'm definitely I'm, I'm be interested to get your thoughts before we, we jump into a, a young man who just committed to Auburn in 20, the class of 24. Uh, but. We discussed last week. Uh, we said this with with uh, with with Jacob. Um, I have to be more specific, Jacob Hillen, <laughs> um, uh, about. I don't think Auburn needs to KD to be twenty twenty two KD twenty twenty one twenty two KD. I think if KD Johnson's playing average, I think that, that makes a huge bit of difference. Bit of difference um, for for the guard play going forward. Yeah, I mean, look, KD KD Johnson can be a good player. He can but he can also be a really bad player at times. And I hate to say that because of his energy, right? His, his, all of that stuff is fine, but he goes through stretches. And I gave him credit earlier in this Tennessee game. He was the reason Auburn was in the game down the stretch on the road to Thompson Bowling Arena. So give him credit where it's due, but it's just more times than not. It's the bull in China shot, horrible between the legs, fade away three that we know is not, not going to go in. And you know, he's going to shoot it 10 seconds before he does. That's not the KD Johnson that Auburn needs. Auburn needs the KD Johnson that we saw late in this Tennessee game, put his head down, get to the basket, earn his way to the free throw line, knock down some free throws, and command the offense a little bit. I like him coming off the bench, but again, KD Johnson cannot be the answer if Auburn wants to be a long-term team in March. Jalen Williams is that guy, but Auburn's not feeding him at times. But I've said earlier in the year, fellas, that if Jalen Williams, and this was a hot take, but I still believe it, if Jalen Williams is the go-to offensive guy for this Auburn team, that's not a good thing. Uh, and that's nothing against Jalen. It's just my opinion about the guys that are on this team. It needs to be Wendell Green, Janai Broom. Sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. But if KD Johnson's playing better, then yes, absolutely. Auburn's in a better spot. I like that take a lot, Goins. Um, and, and let's let's pivot 
real quick and give some Auburn fans something to smile about real quick. And, and Dylan, why, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the number three overall recruiting class um, in the class of 2024. Um, a lot of people are ready to go ahead and skip to the 24, 25 season. I think 23, 24 is going to be fun. <laughs> let's not do that yet. Uh, but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and throw you the keys and, and, and let, let's rock and roll with that. Uh, I am down. So in case you didn't know, Auburn is the number three recruiting class, class 2024. That is including Peyton Marshall, a four-star center who is six foot 11, 310 pounds. Love to have him on the O-line, but it's pretty cool having him <laughs> as a, as a big man on the basketball team. Also got to high Pettiford on Wednesday. Another, I think he's a five-star on the 24 seven composite. He's a five-star. Yes. Uh, and now we have a six foot four point guard who just committed on Friday. LeBaron Phylon from Mobile, Alabama, the number one player in the state of Alabama. And all I got to say is tall guard, tall guard, tall guard. The thing Auburn has been struggling with for years now, we have finally maybe figured it out. And we got a six foot four point guard who is a human highlight reel on on all of his uh, highlights I've seen. Go in, I'm just going to put the ball on the tee and let you talk about how, how excited Auburn fans should be for this class. Well, yeah, I mean, they should definitely be excited. And and we talked about, you know, how great of a recruiter Bruce Pearl is and has been and continues to be at Auburn in the SEC and in the state of Alabama, right? We know he's gone into Georgia and gotten the best players over there, but it's about time to get the best player in the state of Alabama to come and play for Auburn University. And that's exactly what he's done. And Dylan, you hit the nail on the head right there, going after bigger guards. And I actually talked about this on On the Line uh, on the Friday show to end the week about how maybe Bruce Pearl is starting to realize Sure, the shorter guards, the shorter point guards have been his thing for a long, long time, fellas. And we've seen some really good ones come through Bruce Pearl and come through Auburn. But maybe he's starting to realize, okay, I can't rely on that as much. He goes after and gets a six foot four point guard who is athletic, can shoot, and I think will be able to command the offense. And you pair that with some of the other guys in this recruiting class and the recruiting class before – maybe they're starting to figure out that bigger guards are where college basketball is going. And really, guys, the game of basketball itself, you look at this from middle school all the way to the NBA, bigger guards are where it's at. And so if Bruce Pearl's able to get some of those guys, because look at this 23 season or 2022-2023 season, what has been Auburn's thorn all year long? It's been big guards that go off for big games. And so maybe it's time for Auburn to go get one of those guys and be dominant on both ends of the floor. I'm excited. Auburn fans should be excited as well because they're the number three class in the country right now. They're not done. They're going to get more. And I think Bruce Pearl is really starting to cement himself as one of the best coaches, one of the best recruiters in college basketball, especially with all the stuff in the past, the, you know, the dark cloud that loomed over Bruce in this program. Now that that's all gone, the sun is shining. And I think Bruce Pearl is going to take advantage. I think, I think Goins may have just done all of our work for us, Dylan. Um, I mean, I, you, you just added a true three-level score. Um, like you said, I, I'm in love with this game. Um, I, I think that Lebaron Phylon, right? I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've heard it uh, two, mm-hmm. three different ways, actually. So I want to make sure I'm saying this correct. I, I've, I've heard, heard Phylon, but I... like Phylon, like Phylon, Phylon. That's what that's what I've heard. So that's what I'm going to go with until I'm corrected. Okay. So. All right. I'm, I'm going to rock right there with you. And if we swing and miss, we'll just have each other's backs. Um, but. He's playing real competition. You're looking at, at the quality of teams he's playing, not just in his high school, but his AAU um, and, and, and his, his national scale um, and, and going and going about his recruitment process the right way and development process the right way. This is a guy that I, I fully expect that could very likely be, if not will be soon, a five-star coming out of high school. Um, and you got to remember, he's, the 20, he's a rising senior. Uh, I guess he's active junior, whatever you want to say. Um, this guy has got time to add those stars, and he's always really, really close. I think he's a composite 98.3. Um, just off the top of my head, I don't even have his 24 in, yep. in, in front of me. Yeah. I've been, I've watched way too much film goings. It's kind of a problem I had. Um, <laughs> there's no, there's nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing yeah, wrong with it. I'm a film junkie. And unfortunately I gave Dylan the recruiting fever this year. So now he hates me for having something else to keep up with. Um, yeah, but, when, <laughs> Hey man, once you get, once you get in it, you never go back. It's, it's that's right. You get it. You get addicted to it. Really? It, it's, it's so addictive. Uh, look, let's, let's continue moving on. We've got so, a little women's hoops to talk about, but I did want to go ahead and plug this real quick. Uh, college game day is headed to the Plains for Auburn versus Alabama. Auburn probably won't be ranked going to that game. That's no surprise to any of us. Uh, but Alabama, this is an opportunity to go and you're in front of the jungle uh, and, and and on a national stage and maybe mess around. And, and if you split the series with Alabama this year, you're in good shape. 
Um, so College Game Day, a great predecessor to that. If you're in Auburn, go check it out. It's a ton of fun. Um, and it's just a special occasion to have College Game Day, game day come to your city, not just for football, but for basketball too. Um, let's let's pivot from one coach that, that's done really well in the recruiting trailing has really turned things around, obviously, over his his tenure. And let's, let's talk about Johnny Harris and her crew for just a second. Um, and uh, go, I don't know, if you, you probably know this about me. I'm, I'm a little bit obsessed with women's basketball just because of the X's and O's that go into the game yeah. as opposed to being able to run and well, go. Well, look, man, you give great coverage of, of women's basketball. And, and look, not a ton of people do, unfortunately. And you are you are one of the one of the few that do. So uh, props to you, man. Hey, I appreciate that. Don't give me a bigger head than I already got, man. Come on now. No, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. Uh, Auburn's going for four straight SEC victories. Uh, I, I, I didn't even do the research on the last time that happened because God knows it was not even during the previous tenure uh, yeah. <laughs> of Coach Terry Williams, Florida. Florida. But it's going to be a tough uphill battle. Um, Arkansas, I look back, they've lost four of their SEC games. I won score, um, two of them on a buzzer beater. Everyone's seen the, the, the SEC that made all, all SEC made top 10 on uh, Sports Center um, on just heartbreak after heartbreak for this Arkansas team. But Auburn's got some momentum going on. Um, they've been healthy. I did receive word from inside the team. I can't release who. They will be down one um, on Sunday. Uh, so that's uh, unfortunate. Uh, good news for Auburn. I'll go ahead and just give this plug out there. They should be okay. Um, in terms of rotation wise, it should not throw too much off. Uh, so something to keep an eye on and definitely check out, uh, that, that game's tomorrow afternoon at three Eastern. So two central, um, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm living in this weird world where I cover a central time team and I live in the Eastern time zone. It is a nightmare. Yeah. Don't ever do it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's tough. That's <laughs> horrible. I know. I mean, you work in prep sports, you know, you understand that weird little time zone line right there in, yep. in Eastern Alabama. Yeah, <laughs> yep. absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Definitely something to check out. Um, come, I guess, this afternoon, this this uh, the show comes out on Sunday. Uh, if, if Auburn grabbed four in a row, Goins, I mean, Coach Jay is the answer. She was already the answer in my book, but oh I'm yeah, sorry. no doubt. And then what they've got, they're at home in the midweek versus number one South Carolina, right? Right. Mm. That's uh, well, that, that, that's, that's a look, tall task, right? Tall task. But no, just to 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 give my two cents on a real quick before we can can, can kind of move on is yeah, I mean Auburn basketball for the women's side. I mean, four wins in the SEC in a row that they're going for. I mean. Uh, again, I don't think I've ever seen it. It's been a long time since it's happened, right? I mean, it's it's one of those things where women's basketball in college is so dominant, right? It's so dominated by the few at the top that it's just so hard to be good for everybody else. But uh, credit to, to what the program's doing, Coach Day, they're, they're doing a fantastic job. They certainly are. And uh, we're going to talk about Jeff Graba and, and his squad uh, over on, on the mat here in just one second. So yeah, let's let's take a moment, guys, to talk about uh, Auburn's trip to Coleman Coliseum uh, on on the mat this past Friday. And uh, surprise, surprise, um, Auburn comes away winless uh, from Coleman Coliseum yet again. Uh, and uh, as has been the entire history of the Auburn gymnastics program, and that's not really me throwing shade. If you look back at at, at Friday's meet, guys, it took Bama five career highs uh, <laughs> to, to to beat to beat Auburn. And uh, you know, you, I'll throw shade. <laughs> I know, I know I know Dylan's going to go ahead and, and talk a little bit about um I'm sure he's going to mention the fact that the judging was interesting uh, to say the least and uh I do think before you get into any of that Dylan it is so important that we mention guys enjoy Sunisha Lee while she's at Auburn um because yeah Goins is throwing up the tens she grabbed two in the same night um on on, on both bars and beam and, and we've seen her do both of those respectively right um mm -hmm. but, my God, is she special, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You're right, man. Auburn fans better just take it in now because it's it. She's a superstar. One, she'll go down as one. Literally, as crazy as it sounds, she'll go down as one of the best athletes to ever come through Auburn. Oh, we've had this conversation. We said that she's. Yeah. There, there will be a statue, um, and and she's on on that playing field of of the Bo Jacksons, um, of the Frank Thomases, uh, uh, in terms of just best athletes to ever come through. Um, yeah. Athletics. And uh, Friday was no Friday was probably the prime example, man. Yep, absolutely. And one of the biggest names, like one of the biggest names to come to Auburn. Right. I think that's so important, too, is she was big before she got here. And then she's just made a name for herself even more. So, yeah, what what an honor it is to get to watch and cheer and cover uh, SUNY Lee in this whole gymnastics program. Uh, and they're loaded top to bottom. It doesn't just stop with with, with Sunny Shali. Uh, you look at Sophia Groth, she's a superstar. Uh, you look at Darion Goborn, who can bring the house down with her floor uh, routine. And and she's absolutely disgusting in vault. Um, and, and it just goes on and on. Cassie Stevens, I mean, a couple nights ago, she outscored Sunny Shali in the all around. 
Um, it's it's one of those things that uh, pressure makes diamonds, right? And 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 surrounding yourself with people that are inherently better than you, and I will say Sunni Shali inherently better than everyone, um, <laughs> that makes you better. And 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 what a job Sunni Lee has done, not just for herself, but for the program in terms of of the future. Auburn's always been relevant in the gymnastics scene. They are relevant in the gymnastics scene now. Um, very exciting stuff. Now, Dylan, I'll, I'll let you go on your little short rant, but I will cut you off when you get a little too barner. Um, I, I'll, what are you talking about? I, I've never been that big of a barner in my entire life. <laughs> uh, yeah, as, as you hike, hike up the co- Go Crazy Coach Cadillac t-shirt. My yeah, Cadillac in the background. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. You know, the uh, judges, low, low fishy, just saying, because a lot of a lot of Auburn's nine eights were nine nines for Alabama. It looked a little wonky that all that five Bama players had their career highs last night or two nights ago. But I mean, SUNY owns all as much as Bama fans want to try to throw shade at us for losing. I mean, if it was if it wasn't a team sport, SUNY Lee would have won it all last night. So, well, I don't care if you beat us or not. Uh, Auburn's a national championship contender. <laughs> Listen, there's no surprise here. All I'm going to say before we before we transition into some football, and I give the keys fully to Dylan. Um, there's no surprise that the 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 Friday night heights were a little higher when you're competing in an airplane hangar. Um, there's just no way to. <laughs> I've been sitting on that one, Goins. I've been sitting on that. How, but how long is the question? How long have you been sitting on that one? Uh, way longer than since Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on the reference. I figured Dylan would be the one to say it, but you know what? I, I figured it was coming at some point. So. I, uh, I, 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 a good, good friend of mine in front of the program, uh, Ashley Woods, uh, over at, at the Crimson and White at Alabama. Love, love her to death. Respect her work. She's fantastic what she does. But of course, we had to chirp a little bit uh, on Friday night. And of course. Uh, I, 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 she told me, you know, it's something to the effect of, you know, uh, Auburn's down bad. And I said, that's okay. My only request is like I never have to watch another sporting event at Coleman Coliseum because not only is it horrible for the athletes, it's terrible for spectators and even worse for media. Um, and that goes for TV too. I just don't ever want to see it again. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's down there on the list of places you want to visit in college athletics, and that's not just because it's Alabama. There could be any other logo on that floor, and it's just not a place you really want to go. I've been there multiple times, and okay. my luck's actually been pretty good watching Auburn athletics in that building, but. I don't know. And like, I was going to go this year for Auburn basketball, but for maybe obvious reasons, I decided to not make that trip. So I can't say I blame you. I, I, the only shade I really threw, and it really wasn't as much beef as I was like, Bryant Denny, beautiful stadium, beautiful facilities. They did a great job and they've kept that place up so well. Why is it that I walk a quarter mile down the, down the campus and it looks like I'm walking into a Delta airlines airplane here. <laughs> I mean, Bryant Denny is the best looking building in the city anyways. Listen, I'm actually not going to throw that. I'm not going to throw that much shade at, at Tuscaloosa. I don't, <laughs> I've been I've been to all but two campuses in the SEC, um, and Alabama's not even my bottom three. I mean, I'm I've been Auburn fan for life, so I mean, I kind of have to throw some shade when I'm I, offered the opportunity. Listen, it's no Bobby Dodd at Historic Grant Field in downtown, but whatever downtown Atlanta. But we'll, we'll, that's another story for another time. If we're going to compare Tuscaloosa uh, and Atlanta, we might as well just move on to football. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so Go Auburn ahead. has picked up a. Another commit for class 2024, a class that we are going to see a lot of big names uh, commit to Auburn throughout the season, strictly because I said it, Tar said it. I feel like everyone's going to say it. Uh, this could be a top 10 class. I think oh, he, he's, sure. put, he's putting in that work to make this a top class in the country. And it starts, it started with Amon Lane at four star corner. Friday was Jaden Lewis, another four star corner. And Friday was four star quarterback Walker. White, which the Walter White memes have been a plenty on Auburn Twitter, but just a dual threat athletic quarterback that it looks like Hugh Freeze is probably setting him up for the QB of the future, which is kind of obvious. But I mean, I think a QB battle between him and Antoine Hill in a couple of years is gonna be really fun to watch. I think that could very well happen, Dylan. And and I'm gonna go and pose this question to to, to Goins real quick, and, and and just talk about how important this this signing is, or not signing, but commitment is. In terms of you had your 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 twenty twos, you had Braden Joyner that was your biggest uh, in, in class recruiter, right? Um, and, and Walker White has already really begun to reach out to other guys and said, "Hey, we're building something special." Jacob, how important is it to have one of those guys committed early that that can go ahead and start, I guess, being a disciple um, and saying, "Hey, look, this is our vision. Come be part of it." 
Well, first of all, I think it's important to realize what Hugh Freeze did with this commitment. Yes, it's a four-star quarterback. Yes, he's top 15 in his position. Yes, he is one of the best in the class of 24. But this was a guy where all the crystal balls and all the different sites, he was going to Clemson. Like, this guy was going to Clemson less than 24 hours before he committed to Auburn. I I'm telling you, that's that's how this went down. He was going to Clemson. He was a Dabo lock. Like, And when Dabo gets a guy, gets his quarterback – he doesn't lose. But Hugh Freeze wasn't worried about that. Hugh Freeze didn't really care and went after him anyway. And it took one of these right here, a little Zoom meeting, and that's all it took. And Walker White decided to flip and come to Auburn and be the quarterback of the future. And so you mentioned uh, him being a big recruiter. He named 14 different guys in his commitment video yesterday saying, hey, I'm doing it. You need to do it as well. Come play and come be a part of the difference at Auburn. Something we thought was going to happen under Brian Harson that obviously didn't work. But this is a new era. Like, this is a new situation. And having a guy like this who is the quarterback, who we all know is more times than not the leader on the team, right? He's the vocal one on the offense of the team. For him to call out big names in recruiting, 14 different guys, and say, hey, I'm doing it, you should too. It's massive, and I think he will continue to be one of those guys who preaches Auburn, recruits Auburn, and gets some big names to come here, visit, and then hopefully commit and sign. I I think you bring up a great point, pretty much hit all, all the all the bases that, that I was kind of hinting at and trying to trying to trying to get you set up. I, I really I think it's interesting that you mentioned and, and Caleb Caleb Jones is is a top tier recruiting guy. We know this. He's he's great at what he does. But uh, what, what what was it that he referred to it as? He called it Walker's Most Wanted, uh, and the, and the fourteen guys that Walker called out. Um, and, and their traction with Auburn and, and the recent, I guess, interest generated with coming to Auburn. In this short period of time that Hugh Freeze has done, leading all the way up to this commitment, um, if you want to grade the 23s, go ahead and grade the 23s. If you're giving Hugh Freeze a letter grade on his job uh, on a by month month to month basis to where he's at from where he began, um, where, where, where are you grading Hugh Freeze and company right now? Well, I mean, I think when you look at it, when he came in, the class, the roster, the program – was like a D minus, <laughs> like it was, it was bad. I don't want to say it was full on F, but it was pretty close down there. And, and in this situation, guys, it was, it was as bad as it could get at Auburn, which should never happen. But now that Hugh Freeze has been here for literally less than eight weeks, I mean, he's been here basically two months and his grade is an A plus. I don't know what that looks like. I didn't really get those a whole lot in school, but he's got an A plus, <laughs> right? Like, a plus is fantastic. He has come in and and we knew this about Hugh Freeze, right? We knew when he came in that he would give 110%, right? He would take advantage of a second chance because there was a time, guys, Hugh Freeze didn't think he'd ever coach in the SEC again. There was a short time where he thought he'd never coach again. Then he got the job at Liberty, but never did he think he'd be back in the Southeastern Conference. When he took this job, he has just taken advantage of it and killed it in recruiting more than anybody could have. And if you listen to my show on ESPN 106.7, I was not a huge Hugh Freeze fan. I wasn't. He was not my first choice. He was not my second choice. I was just not excited about the Hugh Freeze decision. And when they made the hire, I said, okay, let's see what happens. And he's absolutely blown it out of the water. Prove me wrong. Now, there's a lot to be said about what will happen on the field. That's a different conversation to have, but that does need to be kept in mind, right? Just because you can recruit like crazy doesn't mean that you're going to be able to get production on the field. But again, that's a separate conversation. Just looking at recruiting, fellas, it's been unbelievable. The turnaround has been magnificent. He's going after guys that Auburn didn't have a single chance with. He's going after guys that didn't even know Auburn existed because Brian Harson never reached out to him, never talked to him, never thought about talking to him. And so he's going after those types of guys. And he's also going after people that are in the backyards of big programs that are committed to big programs. He's not afraid of Nick Saban, Dabo Sweeney, Ryan Day at Ohio State. He doesn't care. He's going to go after who he wants. And so far, fellas, he's got them. And it's unbelievable to see what he's done in just a short amount of time. And we're about to see what he gets in almost a full cycle. But 2025 is that full cycle. And the, the sky's the limit, fellas. It's going to be great. I, I I don't want to steal Dylan's thunder um, because I, I'm, I'm going to – first off, hit retweet on everything Jacob Goins just said because he's just on here spit, spitting facts right here on the college loop in front of you. Um, you're talking about winning battles in backyards. Dylan, I'll go ahead and just go ahead and preach about how excited you are about um, the fact that Auburn looks like they're going to be competing in the state of Alabama. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, two out of the three players right now are within the state of Alabama. 
because Jaden Lewis is from, I believe, Aniston, and Amon Lane is from Moody, Alabama. And good all good Lord Almighty, holy cow, we have not had a coach who wanted to recruit in the state of Alabama more than Hugh Freeze has right now. Auburn has been third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, never second in the state of Alabama in terms of recruiting the talent. And it is embarrassing. It has been embarrassing that Auburn has not been able to recruit within the state of Alabama. We can't get guys from Central Phoenix City, which is right down the road. Opelika players are going elsewhere. Auburn high school players are going elsewhere. And Auburn just can't seem to figure it out. Hugh Freezes came in, and he's getting guys from Tuscaloosa to come to Auburn's junior day on the same day as Alabama's. Like, dude decided to drive two and a half hours eastward to go to Auburn University instead of drive 30 minutes to go to Alabama. And I'm going to build off that, Goins, and, and kind of go and let you you speak on how important it is uh, to win the state of Alabama. I mean, obviously, you've got this the giant um, over on the other side of the state. But but you look at these guys. I mean, Trent Seymour, sure, he's a 27, say what you will. You got him on campus early um, in, in the tenure of, of Bruce Pearl out of Thompson, a school that Auburn is historically horrific at getting kids out of. Uh, we yeah. thought for a long time, before Darren Reed, we thought for a long time that we were blacklisted from Central Phoenix City at Auburn. Yeah. Um, and and then, and then you look, and, and there's schools in, in, in the local area that are now pivoting back. And you're not, I'm not just talking about Pike Road, I'm not just talking about Opelika. Um, and, and, and you, you got to lock down Auburn, obviously, Auburn High School. But there are, there are schools in, in Southeast Alabama and in Eastern Alabama in general and around the state for that matter that are starting to say, hey, guys, like, let's go check out what's going on at Auburn. How big of a deal is that to win the, win the state battle? Oh, it's massive. And, you know, I'm convinced that if Hugh Freeze had an extra two weeks, the two five stars we saw on a car from Montgomery go to Alabama, they would have been Auburn Tigers. I promise you that. If he had just a little bit more time, because he almost he almost made that work, right? I mean, in the very short amount of time, he was able to do that with those two massive players at a car from Montgomery. But just talking about the state of Alabama, yeah, there's so much talent in this state. We just saw the best class ever come through here. I think it's going to take a little bit step back this coming class, but I think 25 has a chance to be right up there with this class we just saw. Right. And if that happens, you've got to win that. And I know it's super important because, again, yeah, you talk about the big high schools, all the ones in Birmingham, the ones in Tuscaloosa, the ones in Montgomery, the ones here in Auburn, right? You have got to get these guys because you are picking from some of the best talent, not just in the state, across the entire United States. And if you're able to win that against Alabama, if you're able to avoid – schools like LSU and Georgia coming into your state, Tennessee at times coming into your state and taking those players. Yeah. You're going to be and set yourself up for success. Now I think the timing is really, really interesting guys. We talked about this last week on the show about how Hugh freeze is doing what he's doing already coming into Auburn, where we've seen Auburn just be down the last couple of years. Right. It seems like everything's doing this, but on the other side of the state, it seems to be doing this, not quite going down, but it's sort of leveling out, and the conversations are starting to be had about, is the dynasty done at Alabama? So you may be able to see some form of a switch in the next two to three years. Not saying it could happen, but it very well might. You see that switch, and Hugh Freeze is the perfect guy. He's shown it already to jump on that opportunity, take over the reins, and become the stronghold in the state of Alabama. Dylan, there's no better way to wrap up the show than that, that quote right there. You agree with me? I will say, I want to kind of go through the list of uh, Walker's Most Wanted before we close out the show, just because <laughs> it's, it's worth noting them. There's the some talent. big names on there, huge names. Yes. Because start off with three star, six foot five, 280 pound offensive tackle, Jamison Riggs, six foot five, offensive guard, Blake Franks, four star, uh, six foot six, offensive tackle, Daniel Calhoun, Calhoun four star. Uh, then you have four star, did I say Blake Franks? Uh, no. Yeah, Blake Franks, four-star guard. Jaquan McCroy, who is already the front runner for my favorite player in the class of 2024, because he is six foot eight, 350 pounds at a three-star. And then you got four-star wide receiver Nykar, out of who's our Georgia commit. Uh, four-star athlete Daniel Hill. Uh, four-star tight or three-star tight end, Cardo Nelson. Three-star wide receiver Terrence Moore. Four-star Alabama commit Martavis Collins at tight end. Three-star running back Kevin Riley out of Tuscaloosa. Uh, Five-star Micah Hudson, who is undecided, wide receiver. Cameron Coleman, three-star wide receiver. 
and Alabama commit three-star wide receiver Perry Thompson. I mean, he is even pulling Bama commits out of the woodwork to try to get them to come to Auburn. Yeah, and again, Hugh Freeze is going to go after those guys. He's not, oh, you're committed to Alabama, can't talk to you. You're committed to Clemson or Georgia, not going to mess with them because if you, if you don't want to come here, then I don't want to mess with you. No, he's going to go after those guys, and he's not afraid to do it, and I promise you he'll steal a few of them. I, uh, man, this has been a great football conversation, one of the best we've had in a while. Jacob, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, go ahead and plug yourself, tell everybody where they can go find, find your work, show you some love, follow you on your socials. Hey, guys, I appreciate you having me on. This has been a blast to have uh, – because I don't get to talk about Auburn athletics enough, right? That's because that's all I ever do is, is bored, talk man. Auburn athletics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, look, I appreciate you guys. You guys are doing great stuff getting started, and uh, uh, you guys do a great job. Yeah, follow me uh, on Twitter at goins 2 Jacob G-O-I-N-S, the number two Jacob. And then uh, you can catch my show on the line on ESPN 106.7, 2 to 4, Monday through Friday. Uh, that's 106.7 here in Auburn. Uh, if you're outside of town, you can listen to it, ESPNAU. Again, my co-host Carter Bird and I, two to four every day, we go live talking basically the same things here, all things Auburn athletics, SEC stuff going on around the country. So uh, we uh, we have a lot of fun. And then also I want to plug uh, Lee Scott really quickly, uh, as I am the voice of Lee Scott Warriors. They are wrapping up basketball season. We've got postseason play underway. Uh, Lee Scott Varsity Boys just won the region on Friday. They are regional champs. The girls are runner-ups. They will be competing in the Elite Eight on Monday and Tuesday, hosting at Lee Scott Academy here in Auburn. And then hopefully if they win those, they'll move on to the Final Four in Montgomery Wednesday, Thursday state championship games on Friday. All of those games on AU100, that's 100.3 on your radio dial or AU100FM.com. So uh, Varsity Boys for football just coming off a state championship. We're hoping to add on a couple more over at Lee Scott Academy. I would if I didn't know better, Jacob. I would think you rehearsed that time or two. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe once or twice. <laughs> a lot of talent. Twice. Hey, a lot of talented young athletes, uh, young uh, men and women at Lee Scott Academy. So make sure you check out all of Goins' work and the Lee Scott Academy Warriors. Uh, they've always been competitive in pretty much everything, as long as I've been around prep sports in East Alabama, uh, specifically in, in the private division. Uh, they are a group to be to be reckoned with, and some talents that you you may see if you're an Auburn fan, you may see playing for your for your favorite team in, in the near future. Um, I'm Harrison Tar at by Harrison Tar on Twitter. You can check out my written work and my other podcasting work in case you don't get tired of my voice. Um, at the Auburn Daily, I'm on the Auburn Daily Show with one Dylan Lark every Wednesday. That comes out at three o'clock. I'm on uh, three o'clock Eastern time. That'd be I'm sorry, four o'clock Eastern, three o'clock Central. And then on Fridays, I'm there with the lovely Lindsey Crosby. What a guy! If you ever need baseball content, he is the man. Like I said, at by Harrison Tar on Twitter, you can check out all the College Loops work right here at the College Loop. No gimmicks. And Dylan, I'll let you get us out of here, man. All right, you can come follow me at your boy the tank on Twitter. That is Y A B O I the tank. You can also catch me on the Auburn Daily Show every Monday with Lance Daw and Wednesday, as always, with Harrison Tarr, because we don't talk to each other nearly enough about Auburn sports. You can also follow the College Loop on everything except for MySpace. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok. We're there. And all that being said, this has been the College Loop Podcast. <laughs>